So you have a, that, that the thing, the, the people that were here before just now, that's uh, logic, yeah, I guess. Yeah, there's a program going on. This yes, thing. that's uh, quite a crowd. Are they all from, they're not all from Toronto, I guess. No, they're, they're, it's, they're, they're, they're staying here, they're visiting. They're from, all over the place. from all over the place, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't want to be frivolous, let alone silly, but uh, I noticed this afternoon that uh, Barack Obama has released his uh, predictions for the uh, tournament, and see, which is just starting out uh, the NCAA double, double A basketball tournament, and uh, he has uh, Duke winning it. <laughs> Duke wasn't ranked, is not ranked very highly, uh, uh, but uh, Barack Obama. So now, but now I'll just, you'll know I'll be sad if they don't win. You'll, you'll, I won't be able to hide. What sport is this? Uh, this would be basketball. <laughs> they have a, they bounce a big ball up and down the, and they try to stuff it into a basket. Sometimes they, they're not very accurate. Uh, and so they try to get right up to the basket and jump very high and stuff the basketball into that's, the, it's allowed to do that. Uh, but the the other the, the players on the other team, of course, try to stop them. They try to get in their way and so on. Um, so in any case, uh, uh, do I have to do anything here? No, I think I'm I think I'm okay. So um, uh, by the way, um, I uh, I can either talk uh, on something further. I, I may not completely get get completely finished today. Uh, this was all this was stuff that was in the num seminar and it's it's a little bit different than what's in the in the normal lectures in the course. Um, um, just for those of you, I, I, I'm happy if I don't get finished today, I'm happy to talk further uh, just to finish it up on Monday or uh, or I could talk on Wednesday on that. Uh, but um, um, I would like to start at six at five o'clock on Monday and finish ten minutes early. So whatever Monday's lecture will be next. This is just next Monday's lecture. I'd like to start if I could. It doesn't uh, inconvenience anybody that is planning to come. I'd like to start at, at five. Um, and end at uh, 550. Because there is uh, I have a dinner that I'm going to and uh, it starts at six. So I'd like to end at 550 and that's if that's all right. So um, I just I just I described a conjectural uh, formula or a construction of the automorphic um, uh, the automorphic Galois group.
And it was uh, defined as a locally compact group as um, a product, uh, the fiber product, in fact, over an infinite set of um, um, locally compact groups, which um, fiber um, over the Vey group. And so each of these is constructed, they're almost uh, just the um, Langlands L group attached to a given um, uh, group G. And uh, with the structure sitting inside the Langlands L group attached to an, an automorphic representation on that group. That's not quite the case, but it's very close to being what this is. Uh, but in any case, this is a fiber um, product over the A group. F is a global field. No, a number field that's characteristic zero. And um, this thing here, the fiber of this, uh, over WF is actually not G hat, something a little bit smaller than G hat. Uh, G hat is a complex um, uh, dual group. It's called the dual group. It's a complex group, but sitting inside that is a maximal compact subgroup. And that is roughly speaking what the fiber of this is. It's actually the maximal compact subgroup, not of the dual group, but of um, the simply uh, uh, the simply connected cover of the dual group. It's the maximal compact subgroup of that. And with that uh, taken, so it's it's one max uh, compact simply connected group KC um, uh, sitting in uh, LC, fibering over. WF and the, the construction, um, which I didn't describe, but it's not terribly, I mean, if it's correct, it, 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 um, it's not terribly complicated, but because this is required to be simply connected, um, um, this is no longer a semi direct product. It is, a, it really is. Um, 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 an extension uh, that it does not split. And uh, so, so in any case, this is a simply connected, um, a simply connected compact group, this fiber product, because this is the only non-compact part of uh, this, the fiber product taken over WF as fibers that are compact groups, and so this remains a locally compact group. Um, it's something we would expect. Uh, I think people, they never, Sarah in his article um, in the motives um, uh, volumes that are from the AMS Symposium Pure Mathematics said that he hinted that the motivic Galois group should be simply connected. Um, um, Oh, but uh, uh, um, he, th this, this is why, I mean, th this would account for that. This is why I haven't said what the motivic Galois group should be. Well, I'll say that in a moment. This is, this is a locally compact group, and it should parameterize automorphic representations. Um, uh, but in any case, this construction, which I haven't described explicitly, this, this comes with embeddings. Um, actually, uh, these uh, groups here come with embeddings of their localizations. And so, um, um, so let me just put it like this, LF. Uh, this fiber product of all of these things, 
this is the fiber, this is for this fibers over W. Um, so LF um, comes, um, it's a locally compact group. So LF So um, LF um, is a locally, comp this is a, a, a fibers over WF and is, would be a locally compact group. Um, with local the fibers over over WF, the global VE group, this is something that's very well understood and reasonably concrete. And um, so it's a low would be a locally compact group. Um, but what's particularly interesting from our point of view, um, it comes also with local embeddings. Um, of the local um, Langlands group. Um, I don't know, uh, Marco and I were talking and that it's, uh, we're, we're complaining about, I think Marco was complaining about this and I definitely was, I'm tired. I don't know whether you guys are tired. It's getting near the end of the, uh, you've, you've said it's tiring. It's getting near the end of the term and uh, everybody seems very tired. I, <laughs> I, I certainly feel that way. Anyway, this is, this, fi this fibers over the Vey group. The Vey group comes with, uh, it's well, well understood. It comes with local embeddings of local VE groups. And um, this is almost the same as this. This is the local VE group. This, in fact, is just equal to this unless um, you're in the p-adic case where this is a little bit larger than this. It's, this is, in the p-adic case, this is the direct product of this group with an SU2 which is something that Deline um, introduced, or a version of which Deline introduced um, and, call, um, and it became known as the Vey, Vey Deline group, something just a little bit larger than the Vey group. But in any case, that's what this is. This embeds into here, this embeds into here, and so uh, this fibers over here. Um, the embeddings of the um, the local embeddings here come from local embeddings uh, from each of these things. And this thing is supposed to, um, uh, let's see, what do I want to do? I want to um, pull this down. This group then uh, of this locally compact group, it's supposed to be um, a, something a little bit bigger, quite a lot bigger than the local, than the global VE group. Uh, in Langland's questions six and seven, he postulated um, a map uh, uh, or a, a a some kind of characterization, at least of some automorphic representations by maps of the global VE group into the global L group. Well, uh, this is something bigger than the VE group, and one uh, would then have the following conjecture that is more, that includes everything that um, was initiated in the seventh and last of Langland's questions Lang the seventh and last of Langland's questions were that automorph that maps of the global VE group into the L group um, should give rise to automorphic representations of the original group G. 
So here we have um, an, uh, a much stronger version of that, uh, which I'll state first for GLN. There exists a bijection. So this is a this this construction. This um, this is a conjectural construction uh, of this bigger group, and the construction itself can't even be made without the principle of functoriality. The principle of functoriality went in to what these things were. Uh, it, uh, it it was attached to automorphic representations of a given group G. Um, but not all automorphic rep representations, only those ones which were not functorial images or uh, expressed in terms of L functions, only those ones uh, whose L function for any given R, um, uh, whose L function for any given R uh, has a pole at S equals one that's no larger than, uh, Possible. I'm not. I'm, I'm, I, I'm not, I won't repeat that because I talked about it on, on Wednesday. But in any case, we could could now once one has LF defined, it should have the property that there is a bijection between irreducible representations R of this locally compact group. And so this would be into a general linear group. So this is, we're just talking about locally compact group and a representation, an n-dimensional continuous representation of that into GLN. Um, and this should be a bijection from irreducible representations of this group to cuspidal automorphic representations of GL and A. So this should, this should th be the thing that uh, whose irreducible representations precisely parameterize cuspidal automorphic representations, the general linear group. Conjecture two is a, an extension of that uh, that would apply to any group. This is, this is the role that this Langlands group would play for um, um, representations, automorphic representations of a general linear group, but it should, there should be a generalization of it. And the, the part of this, uh, would be the theory of endoscopy. But it would say a more general um, mapping. Conjecture is a more would be a more general mapping um, from not representations of this group but rather homomorphisms of this group, LF, into the L group attached to any given G. So uh, given, um, um, so this would be, um, say, for G, any group over F that is quasi-split, And uh, this would be a mapping from homomorphisms from um, um, Langlands parameters or L homomorphisms um, from LF to this dual group. And what should its image be? It should be packets or families of automorphic representations which are tempered, tempered automorphic representations of G, 
G being a quasi split group. Um, so it's from bat would be from bounded bounded, let's say global Langlands parameters. That is to say, um, L homomorphisms from this group, assuming it, it exists, and it um, is fibers over the VE group. And so uh, this group requires the VE group for its definition. If G is a general quasi split group, this is supposed to be the um, uh, uh, sem semi direct product of G hat with the VE group in which the VE group acts on G hat through the action of the Galois group on G hat, given by the fact that GFF is a quasi split group. So this is bounded global Langlands parameters. So in other words, L homomorphisms. From this group, um, L homomorphisms, um, which we've seen in a number of different contexts, to disjoint. So what is the image of these things? It is disjoint. Um, <laughs> disjoint um, global L packets. This would be the definition of L packets whose union. Um, is pi uh, um, automorphic tempered G. The set of irreducible tempered Um, automorphic representations of GA. GA. So it would, it's supposed to um, classify it with its role if, if it's correct and if it does what one hopes or expected, expects it to do, it really it would be to classify Automorphic representations in this very for any quasi split group reductive group in this very strong sense, uh, with the specialization that would ensue uh, at L packets or singletons for the general linear group. So with this specialization as conjecture one to GLN. Now I've said endoscopy. Endoscopy doesn't require. Uh, this it's not needed for this assertion. Uh, the assertion could simply be described as a, a parameterization, uh, or as as a homo as as the as uh, the um, Im image of these from these homomorphisms to representations. But this conjecture too doesn't say anything about what these packets should be. Um, um, I should, uh, I didn't say so, but for in both cases, this would be um, um, both. So conjecture one would, I think, sort of be fair, pretty clearly is supposed to be a special case of conjecture two, and it is a special case. Both of these mappings, however, one property that they should have should be compatible
with the local embeddings. These local embeddings, um, where are they? Uh, the local embeddings. And these, I, I, I emphasize that these local embeddings um, are a part of the structure. They're built in um, to the construction of the global L group. But these are the local embeddings from um, the local Langlands group, um, LFB, into this global group in the natural sense. Uh, that these um, um, are essentially, this is essentially the Vey group, and this is the mapping of uh, the local Vey group into the global Vey group. So with this, it gives us quite a lot more information from GLN. For GLN, um, these, local, these local embeddings have the local data that's built into an automorphic representation. It has the family at the unramified places. It has the set of conjugacy classes, um, uh, semi-simple conjugacy classes uh, for uh, GLNC in GLNC that comes from this local uh, map of the A group. So they tell you that tells you a great deal uh, about what. Uh, for GLN, at least, what the global um, automorphic representation should be. Langland's question two, question six, was uh, stronger. It was a, still a conjecture, but that uh, it uh, described the, how, what you would expect of these mappings in cases where V is ramified or Archimedean. I just said what it would look like um, and how its connection to representations should play out when uh, V is um, unramified, almost all places. It comes from these conjugacy classes and the corresponding uh, induced representations from Hecke algebras. Um, but then Langland's question six is, was a stronger conjecture, which did not come at that time with data that would make, would specify uniquely, but um, it was um, how rep mappings of this thing into the uh, uh, L group would give local representations. Um, so uh, quest conjecture two is less precise and uh, what one would want to make of both conjecture one at the local places to make it completely precise and conjecture two at the local places um, and how they the corresponding representations attached to the local parameters uh, mapping into the l group that we would have up there um, um, not up there down here um, there um uh what we <clears throat> how the how those things would give the information that would allow you to construct both the both the global packets and how they themselves would be constructed out of local packets that is something more and that's why i said endoscopy up there that was a later theory of langland's that gave very precise um uh theory on how what these packets should be what these global packets should be what the local packets should be the local packets out of which they are composed um, and in terms of these local homomorphisms um, from the local bay or bay deline group into the l group what the local packet how the local packet in that if we're attached to any such thing such local homomorphism should be constructed and um, how the global packet well the global packet would simply be a product of the local packets but it would include a multiplicity formula so if the local packets are constructed 
from homomorphisms of the local parameters. And you don't need this global group for any of that. It's just maps of the local V group or the local V Deline group into the L group. And so the theory of endoscopy would tell you how to construct the local packets attached to such things. Um, but then the global uh, theory um, uh, of endoscopy. So global theory, so, so the local theory of endoscopy would tell you how these packets were constructed. The global packet should be a direct product of the all of the local packets attached to one a map from LF into GL, but very crucially something more, the multiplicity with something with which something in one of these global packets uh, obtained as a product of local packets, the multiplicity with which that occurs say in the discrete or the cuspidal discrete spectrum. So uh, I'm. Uh, Can I ask? Um, yes. In lecture one, you you're mapping to the cuspidal spectrum. Cuspidal spectrum of the GLN. But in lecture two, you're going to the. Uh, uh, so what I'm doing in conjecture two is uh, I'm um, not being entirely precise. I'm leaving out the these sort of exceptional cuspidal representations that come from A, a packets. I'm, I'm throwing those away. Or more precisely, the image of this should be uh, the representations, the cuspidal automorphic representations, or the ones that th this multiplicity formula that I just mentioned should describe. Um, it should, the, uh, those, rep those should be the honest to goodness tempered cuspidal automorphic with the tempered cuspidal automorphic representations the ones uh, that well, that's what yeah, i guess that's what i've said cuspidal tempered automorphic representation so, so the thing is um uh, no these are automorphic tempered automorphic representations but then there's something the theory of endoscopy would give you something more it would be a multiplicity formula with which any one of these uh, constituents uh, pi phi occurs in the cusp forms. These, by putting, by making them automorphic, automorphic and tempered, we're automatically ruling out these nasty ones, the ones that occur in the non in the non tempered discrete spectrum with these A packets, and we're ruling that out by asking that they be tempered. Um, of course, one needs a theory of what tempered means, but that is largely due to Harish Chandra and has been resolved. Um, and so what we then the, the thing that we need is a the construction of what the local packets are. And B, if the global packet is then the resulting or the ensuing direct product of local packets, then B, a multiplicity with which the things in the global packet occur in the cusp forms in the discrete spectrum it's the same it's going to be the same thing so if i've thrown away these bad cuspidal representations the tempered discrete spectrum is going to be the same as the cuspidal um well we <clears throat> in conjecture i mean <clears throat> Excuse me, for GLN, the packets are all singletons. And so all you need for the local thing is actually, uh, you need something for the local thing. You need basically the local language correspondence that was proved by Harris and Taylor and Schultz and Ainyar. You, you need to be able to say what the lo local constituents of one of these maps into GLN are. You need a precise description of that and and there is a description the, the local language classification of uh, rep of representations for a general linear group parameterized by maps of the a group into the uh, l group uh, satisfies a couple of conditions that make it uh, unique and the main one is that the langlands uh, that the rank and selberg l functions uh, that have been defined independently by um, um, Jacquet and Godemont 
Uh, no, that's they, they just did the simple ones. Uh, Jacques Shalaika, Piotrowski Shapiro, and I think Shahidi, he might have had a hand in it. Uh, they defined Rankin Selberg L functions for representations, um, for pairs of representations of general linear groups. And that's quite independent of the definition of these things that would ensue from their like their local parameters, maps of the Vey group. So there's two, there's there's an independent way to define the L functions for general linear groups if they're Rankin Selberg L functions. Um, there's of course a way to define them, the L functions and the epsilon factors. Uh, now, uh, there's a way to define them in terms of parameters, but there's an independent way to define them in this case, and uh, that condition, that's the main condition, there were a couple of, a couple of other ones, but that's the main condition uh, to be able to describe the Langlands correspond local Langlands correspondence for GLN uniquely, and that is what Harris and Taylor prove, and then Anyar in a, a pretty complicated way. It's hard to figure out how it all. Yes, yes. That is, that's correct. So, so yeah, that's that's what I. I'm afraid I didn't spell it out, but that's that's what that's what I mean. Pardon me. Um, we have something resembling that for some groups, but you need a complete resolution of the theory of endoscopy for all groups. We have a theory of endoscopy now that uses, that is built on the local, local and global endoscopy. We have a complete theory of that now um, for uh, classical quasi-split groups, both uh, unitary groups and orthogonal and symplectic groups, which is built on the Langlands classification for GLN and is a consequence of elaborate um, um, uh, comparisons of trace formulas. But we don't have, well, there's some talk that uh, Schultz and other collaborators have now proved the local Langlands correspondence for all groups. Do you guys know about that? I, it doesn't see the SV2 part of the It only gives you the count of steps. Well, that's okay. Otherwise, we don't mind that. Yeah. Uh, but it's, there's a more serious question, uh, which it doesn't give. Um, um, I would say, I, I may have, I haven't looked at the paper, but, paper, but um, there's something more that's needed, which I'm afraid um, is really tough. And that is local endoscopy. Local endoscopy just defines these packets in terms of orbital integrals. It's a it's a long and complex uh, uh, and I won't say unforgiving, but it's it's a it's a remarkable theory of Langlands, Shelstead, and Kotwitz, which um, um, does this it does a local. Uh, um, mapping from one group to another um, in terms of orbital integrals on the geom in geometric terms. I do not think that uh, uh, Schultz uh, has anything to do with orbital integrals. And you are really going to need orbital integrals to get the global consequences of this. So it's, it's something that's, uh, I mean, I hesitate to say something like this, something I, I haven't read or looked at, but I think you're going to need to, to get the global correspondence, you're going to need the Langland Shellstead or endoscopic version of the local classification. Whether or may, it's conceivable that the Schultz uh, classification is something can be added to that, which makes the uh, geometric Langland Shellstead Kotwitz um, theory makes it much easier, but I just don't know. Uh, I'm sorry, I think I've, <laughs> I think I've, I, uh, that's pretty technical. I, I, I don't know. It's, uh, sorry, Marco, you were, you were, you said, 
saying you, you were tired and, and I'm tired. It's important to speak on the technical matters too. So um, now um, I just want to make a remark uh, that people, I, I've had people say to me, look, I don't care about automorphic representations because we've been taking all groups here, not just class, not just GLN, not just classical groups. Uh, we've been taking all groups here to put it into this group LF. Um, and that includes uh, exceptional groups, quasi split exceptional groups, F2, uh, uh, G2, F4, E6, E7, and E8. E8 is uh, really quite a nasty customer. Um, and that people have said, look, I don't care about these. Because, and it it's sometimes has been in connection with Whitaker models, where, which exist for GL, have at that time existed for GLN, and I think exist much more generally now. But um, uh, they said, well, look, you know, I don't care. I just, I'm interested in only in GLN. Well, unfortunately, um, uh, this L group, is built out of automorphic representations of all groups, GLN, uh, all reductive groups um, that are quasi split. And uh, the components of that group are equally important for all groups. So if people are interested in only GLN, they could, let's suppose they are very, um, uh, have done many calculations and they, have found many rep automorphic representations of GLN. Um, when they get to GL, let's say, uh, GL 248, uh, they will see the first uh, represent automorphic representation of GLN, a uh, cuspidal automorphic representation of GLN that comes from the group E8. Um, and uh, because, after all, um, Functoriality tells you that if you have a map from one group, the L group of one group to the L group of another group, it's going to give you attached to representations of the first group, representations of the second group. So um, uh, there'll be a bunch of them at 248. Well, uh, as a matter of fact, the fundamental, so, so uh, to talk about representations of general linear groups that are attached to automorphic representations of E8, you would talk about representations, finite dimensional representations of E8 into a complex general linear group. And uh, among those, there are the so-called fundamental irreducible represent finite dimensional representations, um, eight of them, because there are eight vertices. And so the fundamental finite dimensional representations of a given group are attached to the vertices of its Dinkin diagram. And uh, the 248 dimensional one is the first one and the one of the lowest dimension. There is one vertex, uh, I wrote these all down just uh, to be silly, uh, but there's a one that's um, uh, one uh, fundamental representation of E8 uh, that's uh, six of degree six trillion eight hundred ninety nine billion seventy nine million two hundred and fifty four dimensions. So there, uh, you're waltzing along and you're figuring, you're you know, sort of listing all the cuspidal automorphic representations in GLN. You get to this number, and you, there's yet another whole bundle of automorphic representations of GLN coming, not just one, but coming from all of the cuspidal automorphic representations of E8. Uh, and together with that very high dimensional mapping, irreducible representation of that into GLM. So uh, that's already going to be come from functoriality, but to see all of those things um, uh, put into one group, this large group LF, is perhaps a little sobering. Um, but they're part of they're part of the story. All right, and I'm afraid I, I, I uh, so. I'm going to have one more. I've got to do one more lecture, and it's it's on the motivic Galois group.
So let me write it. Uh, I've, I've written the, the automorphic language group as a, just a Latin L. Uh, that's uh, perhaps in my own mind to think of, make me think of a locally compact group. And I'll use script for an algebraic group. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and so initially, this is just a complex algebraic group, a pro-algebraic group. So this is a conjectural. Um, complex. Um, Pro-algebraic group. Um, it, um, <clears throat> the motivic Galois group really should be defined over the rational numbers, but to get, uh, there's, there's two fields kicking around that uh, have to, that are relevant. But to get a to get uh, to get a this is a simpler version of it. This is just a comp as a complex group, and you actually get a complex structure on this uh, by um, taking complex embedding Of, L, of f into c. So that's a data that you have to um, uh, put. And uh, so uh, it's a complex pro-algebraic group um, with local embeddings. Just like we had in the case of the automorphic um, Galois group. Um, well, there's a whole bunch of embeddings. First of all, um, um, didn't seem to write down the local embeddings, but um, but in any case, it's going to have embeddings. Um, Yes, I think I just forgot the indices. It's got local embeddings, F, lo local um, uh, Langlands group, local they group, uh, local Galois group. And these embeddings, um, the complex motivic Galois group is expected to come with embeddings for each V uh, of these groups. Um, now there's something, uh, there's not a vague group here. This vague group is um, doesn't really work for is you can't really make you can't use the whole vague group to create a pro algebraic group and you're going to have to. Um, uh, <clears throat> I'm sorry i'm. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, um, you're not going to have this, we had this thing, uh, we had this thing, the global LF, we had that mapping into the VE group, the global VE group. Um, this group does not go into the global VE group. There's a, another group, uh, a pro-algebraic group, which is constructed in some sense from the VE group, but it's um, called the Tanyama group. It was, it was defined by Langlands in his article uh, in 1977 in the Corvallis Conference. Uh, this is um, called the Tanyama group. And I'm not going to define it. It's one of the more technical things in Langland's article. He just produced a two co-cycle that uh, defined it. Um, um, I'll just describe it as this is the Langland's Tanyama group. And roughly speaking, it's the pro-algebraic hull. Um, 
of the motivic part. I, I, I won't define these things, but of the motivic part. Of the Bay group, the global Bay group. And I'll just say that this is a pro algebraic group with local embeddings. And then um, um, I'll say whose representations. Now I'm talking about finite dimensional representations. Um, are of this complex pro-algebraic group. So it's really just like representations of a complex algebraic group, because these would vanish at almost all places in the product here. So whose n-dimensional representations parameterize whose n-dimensional representations. This is a this is a <laughs> an arrow coming from my partially finished sentence there. What are they param whose, uh, whose representations um, parameterize complex motives, motives over C. So I will describe that in one final lecture. Um, I I'm not won't hold anybody to what I'm about to say, but um, I'm, we're meeting on Monday and we're meeting on Wednesday. Monday, we would start at six. Um, does anybody, uh, I could, all other things being equal, I could finish this up on Monday, or if somebody would prefer, I could finish it up on Wednesday or even Friday. I think I have one more lecture to do on this. Any, any thoughts? Do you want me to just do it on Monday or? Uh, Monday, we, we meet at six. At five, I'm sorry, five, yeah. Five to five to uh, five fifty. Yes. Anybody care uh, when when we should do it? I'm not won't hold you. You don't have to come if you suggest. Pardon me. <laughs> I'm too tired, too hungry. I'm I'm hungry actually. I'm I ate maybe too many cookies and uh, I uh, have a sugar. So no, I can't. I I, I can't. I don't want to. Finish. You're teasing. You're you're jesting. So, 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 so we do it. We'll do it. <clears throat> I'll do it on Monday, and you're welcome to come, and uh, and I'll finish it. I hope. There's. I want to have a section. There's lots more. Uh, actually, there's lots of stuff for the future that one would want to do. Um, there are conjectures like this, uh, about five or six of them, that would have to be built on this, and that uh, as I'd like to say, at least what there's. I, I don't have precise conjectures. I, uh, there are ideas, uh, uh, but uh, it's clear you're going to, they're probably very nice constructions and conjectures that would be built on this that would be uh, meant to accommodate um, further stuff. What's the mixed motivic Galois group, for example? That's very important. What is the, um, what is the exponential motivic Galois group? So, <laughs> I, I, I don't want to be too precise about any of those, but at least I want to draw call attention to them. Um, how do you how do you get motives. Um, there's two kinds of motives there's motives attached to automorphic representations i'm sorry i'm sorry that sugar shortage. Uh, how, how do you get periods there's two kinds of periods there's periods attached to motives, but there are also periods attached to automorphic representations. A big whole uh, industry on that. There's something called the uh, Gan Gross Brassad conjecture about those periods. So what's I, I mean I don't I, I don't have anything precise to say, but 
except that I think you're going to want a map from automorphic periods to motivic periods. Uh, I, I think with all of this stuff happening and more, which I can mention on Monday, you're going to want a kind of reciprocity that says that every, I could be completely wrong, but I think, I think you would expect that every motivic period should be an automorphic period. In other words, all of these motivic periods ought to be gettable, ought to be obtained uh, from the things like in the Gann Gross Prasad conjecture. So I'll talk. I'll talk about those. So I'll talk about how you conjecturally would get the autumn, the motivic Galois group, and and what the few, what things one might look for in the future. Okay. <clears throat>